In this video, we'll discuss how to linearize nonlinear equations so we can apply linear regression. There's not much to cover. There's one underlying concept, but that concept may take some time to digest. Linear regression is predicated on the assumption that the dependent variable is linearly related to the independent variable. Although many engineering problems can be cast or reduced to a linear form, many cannot. A very famous example of this is the RC circuit. It's well known that the voltage over time across the resistor of an RC circuit is a decaying exponential function, which is obviously nonlinear. Let's say we have an RC circuit, but the labeling on the capacitor has eroded, so we don't know its capacitance. We operate the circuit anyways and measure the voltage across the resistor over time. If we know the values of V and R, and the experimental data we collected, is there a way to estimate the value of C? If the data were linear, we could apply linear regression, obtain the slope and intercept, and find C from those values. But the data obviously isn't that linear. If we were to fit a straight line, we'd probably get a horrible R squared. It turns out we can actually do something pretty similar. The premise remains unchanged. To find C, we're going to curve fit. But we're not going to directly curve fit the experimental data. Rather, we're going to fiddle with the data so that it becomes somewhat linear, and then we apply least squares to the transformed data. This process is called linearization. The goal is to manipulate our governing equation or data into the form y equals a1x plus a0, just like least squares. To do so, we might need to square, square root, divide, multiply, exponentiate, take the natural log, or apply any other operations to the equation. For example, we know that the resistor's voltage equals the battery's voltage multiplied by a decaying exponential term. This is nonlinear because t, the independent variable, is encased within the exponential term. If we move t outside the exponential, we should get a linear equation. If we take the natural log of both sides, we get ln of vr equals ln of v plus negative t over rc. Therefore, we've successfully cast this nonlinear equation into its linear form. The ln of vr term represents y, the slope is negative 1 over rc, and the y-intercept is the ln of v term. Now that we have a linear equation, we can go back to the data and apply least squares regression. We apply least squares regression not to the experimental data we collected, but to the transformed data. The regression process is the same as usual. We can set up the system of equations for a set of x and y data points. Now, our x data corresponds to the time, and our y data corresponds to the natural log of vr because t and ln of vr are linearly related. Therefore, we just substitute ln of vr for all the y points and t for all the x points, and then we solve the linear system of equations as normal. When we solve the linear system of equations, we will get the slope and intercept, a1 and a0, respectively. We just linearized the equation and saw that a1 equals negative 1 over rc, so we can easily obtain the value of c once we had the numerical value of a1. This entire process may seem a bit convoluted, so let's take a step back and review the big picture. One of the purposes of curve fitting is to determine an unknown parameter. In our case, we have the voltage versus time data of an RC circuit with an unknown capacitance. We cannot directly apply least squares regression because the data is highly nonlinear. We know from the underlying physics that the resistor's voltage is a decaying exponential, so we transform the equation into a linear form. We saw that t and ln of vr are linearly related, so we applied least squares not to t and vr, but to t and ln vr. This gave us the a1 and a0 coefficients. From the linearization, we know that a1 is related to c, which allowed us to obtain the numerical value of c. This is an example of how we can use transformations to express a nonlinear equation into a linear equation so that we can apply a linear curve fit. This table contains some commonly seen nonlinear equations. It's by no means comprehensive, but it gives you a general idea of how to linearize different equations. Each row contains the nonlinear equation, its linearized form, its relationship to a linear equation, what values you substitute when applying least squares, and most importantly, what you should plot to get a linear relationship between the variables. The first equation represents a power law. Linearizing a power law is similar to linearizing an exponential model. 
you take the natural log of both sides. In this form, ln of y is the dependent variable, q is the slope, ln of x is the independent variable, and ln of p is the y-intercept. When you apply least squares, you do it as normal, except you substitute ln of x and ln of y in for x and y, respectively. When you plot the data, which you should always do, you should plot ln y versus ln x in order to make the data look linear. Next, we have an exponential growth or decay model, just like the RC circuit. Exponential models are heavily used, especially for problems like population modeling and radioactive decay. As we just saw, you take the ln of both sides to linearize it. When you do least squares, x remains the same, but you replace all the y values with the ln of the y values. Finally, a plot of ln y versus x looks linear. Like I said, this table is not all-encompassing, but I think you get the idea by now. There are plenty of nonlinear functions which begets the question, which one should you use? The first step is to refer to the underlying engineering theory. Many times, there is knowledge from a guiding theory of the physical phenomenon and the form of the mathematical equation associated with the data points. For example, the voltage across the resistor in an RC circuit is governed by an exponential, so it makes perfect sense to linearize the exponential model instead of, say, a power model. If there is no equation given to you or if you don't know the underlying theory, you really have no choice but to plot. This is the last column from the table in the last slide. You should go down this list and plot all of these. Whichever one creates the most linear looking plot is probably the model you should use. For example, you should plot ln of y versus ln of x, then ln of y versus x, then 1 over y versus x, and finally 1 over y versus 1 over x. If the plot of, say, 1 over y versus x looks the most linear, then you should use the model corresponding to this equation, which is the reciprocal model. Once again, because this is pulled from the table in the last slide, which is not all-encompassing, you may need to plot other combinations of y versus x. There are also some theoretical considerations you can use in conjunction with your dataset to select a nonlinear function. For instance, if your data passes through the origin, you cannot use an exponential model because exponential models inherently don't pass through the origin. Once again, this isn't a comprehensive list of conditions or anything, but the point is that nonlinear functions may have some properties which may render them incompatible with your data. To summarize, nonlinear functions are prevalent in engineering. You can still apply least squares regression to a nonlinear dataset, but you have to linearize the data first. There are many nonlinear models in the world, so always plot your data thoroughly to ascertain the best fitting nonlinear model. Once you've picked a nonlinear function, you can linearize it and then apply least squares to the linearized model. The next few videos contain examples which illustrate this idea in much more depth. See you next time.